Aaron Carson, Account Manager at Ajax Entry Systems, Inc. They sell electronic entry systems. Remember how in hotels you present the key card to the lock rather than swiping the card. He travels every day and spends one or two nights a week out of town. His wife, Karen, is a stay-at-home mom. They have two small children, aged two and four, named Jimmy and Joey. They have been married for five years and met in college. Aaron is a typical Irishman with jet black hair, brown eyes, and keeps himself in pretty good shape. Karen is taller than average looking, has short blonde hair, blue eyes, and is of Eastern European descent. She keeps herself in relatively good shape, but is self-conscious about her stretch marks and her C-section scar. Aaron doesn't care and calls them battle scars when she gets too upset about them. Life is good in the Carson home, which is a suburban two-story home with four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a full basement. When Karen's father comes to visit from the East Coast, he uses the guest room and usually stays for a week. Karen's father divorced her mother five years ago, and no one knows the whole story. Karen suspected that her father had cheated and her mother wanted to leave, but her parents did not talk about it and quickly suppressed all questions. Aaron was returning home after one of his overnight stays on the road. At the last minute, he changed his plans and went home instead of staying the night. It was only eight o'clock and he could get home around 10. He pulled into his driveway as a man pulled out. The man looked scared as he sped away. Aaron saw the man come out of his house, shook his head and became angry. Entering the door, he calmed down and shouted, Darling, I'm home! Karen came down in a robe, fresh from the shower, and said, Hey, baby, I didn't expect you until tomorrow. She kissed him tenderly, and Aaron could smell the toothpaste on her lips. Honey, who was that man who just left? What do you mean, Aaron? There was no one here, and Dad was in the basement, she said without enthusiasm. Well? Someone was definitely here and leaving when I pulled up. After hearing Aaron return home, Karen's father, Jack, went upstairs. Hey, Aaron. Good to see you, son. Hello, Jack. Who was the guy who just left? Jack became very nervous and looked at his daughter while she looked at him expectantly. I didn't know there was anyone here. I sat in the basement all evening watching a movie and drinking your scotch. So, let me make this clear. You're both home. No one knows the man who left and I find Karen just out of the shower. Can any of you convince me that Karen didn't have a man? Now Aaron was starting to get angry. Is Karen really cheating on him? Does her father know about this? Jack said, Aaron, she's not cheating on you, I swear. How do you know that, Jack? You didn't know there was someone here. The basement is quite soundproof, especially in relation to the bedroom. She could fuck this guy screaming like a banshee and no one but the kids would hear. Karen cried and tried to justify herself. Dad, tell him, please. I can't let him think I cheated on him. Please, Aaron, I'm not having an affair, I swear. Now hysterical. She looked back at her father, who collapsed into a chair. Aaron, this guy was here for me. He's the escort I hire when I'm in town. Aaron yelled, bullshit. Baby, it's true. That's why he and his mother broke up. It's true, Aaron. I'm gay. Aaron sat down on the nearby couch in shock. As he tried to make sense of his father-in-law's confession, he thought about what he knew. This would make sense in her parents' divorce. Could this be a long-standing family secret? Karen obviously knew. But why didn't she tell him? Aaron, honey, say something, please. I would never cheat on you. You know that. Aaron looked at her and thought that he didn't really know this but how could he prove it? He thought about a fresh shower. He thought that she was hiding something from him, and then a light bulb flashed above his head. Okay, call him back. What? Jack and Karen said at the same time. Call him here, Aaron repeated. If he comes to Jack, Jack has his number, call him. She seemed scared as she and Jack looked at each other with confused eyes. She's inviting him for me, son. Aaron started laughing. Of course she is. Call him here right now, he said with an angry growl. Why, honey? What and how can this help? 
she asked through tears. Aaron smiled without telling them his whole plan and said, I just want him to confirm your story. She relented and went to get her phone. When she came downstairs, she was already talking. Yes, we need you to come back to confirm that you were here because of my father and not because of me. Aaron shook his head, realizing that if he was her lover, then she had simply prepared his answer. However, it didn't matter. Everything will be clear soon. He will be here in ten minutes. It's fast, Aaron answered. Does he live nearby? She looked at him with her red, swollen eyes and said, I don't know where he lives. Fine. Karen looked terrible, and Jack looked like someone had died. Aaron laughed internally as he walked to the basement bar for a drink. He only saw one glass when he went behind the oak bar to get his scotch. He had a wonderful bar stocked with many bottles of good scotch whiskey, his favorite. He saw that Jack had been drinking Glenfiddich for 15 years and poured himself a glass. He heard the doorbell and went back upstairs. Looking into the living room from the kitchen, he saw that his wife was talking with the escort, but Jack was silent. Aaron entered the room and said, Hello, I'm Aaron. Sorry to bring you here, but I needed to know which of these two is your client. The attendant grinned and said, I'm Chris, and I was hired for Jack. Aaron smiled at his wife, looked back at Chris and asked, How much do you charge? Chris thought for a moment and said confidently, $400 for a house call. What do you do for these $400? That's it? Chris answered. Honey, are we okay now? Asked Karen. Sure, baby, Aaron said, pulling out his wallet. Chris, how much does it cost if you fall in love with his free end in his pants? He pointed to Jack. Then he turned to his wife. I want him to do this to your father, to compensate for all the confusion and my misunderstanding. Chris stood silently, and Jack looked like a deer in headlights when Karen said, There is no need for that, my love. Everything is fine. We'll just let Chris go on his way and you can come upstairs with me. Don't be stupid, it's not a problem. Here, Chris, two hundred dollars. Is that enough? Chris was simply shocked, and Jack stuttered like an idiot. Here, I'll give you three hundred dollars if you and I can watch. I won't look at this. You're acting like an ass, Karen shouted. Karen, if he doesn't do this right now, I'll kick both his ass and your dad for lying to me. What will it be? Jack said shyly. It's okay, honey, it needs to be done. Chris turned his head and looked at Jack so quickly that Aaron thought he was dizzy. Jack walked over, snatched the scotch from Aaron's hand, and drank it in one gulp. He looked at Chris and said, Do it! Chris knelt down, swallowed, and watched as Jack unzipped his zipper. At that moment, he lost his composure and fell, still on his knees. Fuck this crap! You caught us! I fucked your wife, but it was only once. Karen screamed, no, as Aaron walked up to Chris, smiled, and kicked him in the crotch as hard as he could. Chris screamed in pain as he fell to the floor. Jack ran to the basement and slammed the door in fear of what was coming at him. In the end, he condoned his daughter's infidelity and tried to take the blame on himself. It was as if they had a premeditated plan in case they got caught, Aaron thought. Karen cried and begged, Aaron, it's a mistake. It was just sex. This is my weakness. Everything is over. Aaron looked at her with contempt and said, Get your shit together and get out of here with your father now. I don't care where you go, but I want you to go. I'll think about what will happen to us. She left in tears while Aaron noticed Chris sneaking towards the door. Where are you going? I'm not done with you yet. Chris got his ass kicked and ran to the door. He was able to jump out and get into his car before Aaron got to him. Aaron didn't actually try to catch him. He didn't want to go to jail. Karen went down the stairs and Jack came up from the basement. She cried and begged, Aaron, please, let's leave this in the past. I don't want our family to break up because of my stupidity. You should have thought about your family sooner, stupid, Aaron shouted. After they left, Aaron went downstairs and refilled his glass with the golden yellow goodness. He looked at the message he had received earlier that night and dialed the number. Hello, Aaron. What's happened? I returned home too late. This guy was leaving when I returned. 
Damn it, you didn't catch them red-handed. No, but I made him confess. What? Yes, it's a long story, but you'll enjoy it. You will be pleased to hear about my excellent acting skills. Thanks for the warning, Carrie. You're welcome. When I heard her talking to him and making plans, I should have let you know. You know I never liked that bitch, and I hated her even more for taking you away from me. Well, you left me? Yes, I was too young and was afraid to get involved. It was my biggest mistake to run away from you. I never stopped loving you. We can resolve this issue later. I need some rest. Good night. Good night, Aaron. Stay connected. Aaron smiled as he remembered the call from his ex-girlfriend that night, who told him he had to come home because his wife had invited her coach. Karen didn't realize that she and Chris were talking quite loudly at their table in the health club's cocktail bar, and she certainly didn't know that the pretty redhead sitting behind her was Aaron's ex who regretted breaking up with him. As she passed out, Carrie mentally prayed that Aaron would divorce the bitch so she could have a second chance. Five days after she was caught cheating on her husband, Karen walked down the long corridor in the emergency department wing of St. Alexander's Hospital, looking for room 7A. She took a deep breath and entered. Hello, Father. Hey, Karen. Any news? Yes, but first tell me about yourself. Well, they don't think I'll have any permanent damage. I'm just waiting for my arm to be x-rayed before they put me in a cast. Are you in a lot of pain? Karen asked, suddenly feeling guilty. Not anymore. They got me hooked on something, but it used to hurt like hell. Are you going to call the police, Dad? They were already here. They got a call from the hospital when I told them what happened. So they're arresting Aaron? God, no, I would never take him away from the boys. I told them that I was attacked by a black guy who wanted to take my wallet. Either way, it's my fault. I should have knocked some sense into you when you let me in on your little plan. Thank you for not giving him away. I'm really sorry, Dad. I just bought your bullshit about what they don't know won't hurt. I did not say... Oh, shut up, Dad. It was bullshit. I just couldn't see it. I thought my plan was foolproof if you were there as cover in case someone told Aaron about Chris's coming and going. This gay, but would have been perfect if he hadn't tried to buy you a blowjob. I thought I was so damn smart. But in fact, he is so damn smart. It was a good plan, but I shouldn't have agreed. I should have talked you out of it, and I regret that. Now we're paying the price. God, all I wanted was one time with this perfect example of a man and it wasn't worth it. So, what did Aaron say? He's going to let me come home later and talk to him. Now it's cooled down, at least with me. I haven't been served with the divorce papers yet, but I know he's met with a lawyer. The lawyer probably didn't make him happy. The children are small, and this is a lot of support and alimony that he has to pay for a long time. All I can hope for is a chance. I can't lose him, Dad. I know it's stupid to say this after what I've done, but I just can't. I love him so much, she said, bursting into tears. Aaron walked up to the Starbucks and looked out the window. He saw his ex-girlfriend Carrie sitting and waiting for him. He came in, ordered coffee, and sat down opposite. Hi, Aaron, she said with a wide smile. Hello, Carrie. How was the meeting with the lawyer? Hard. Even the fact that she had sex with him in a house with children doesn't matter. 50-50 split, I'm stuck paying the mortgage, child support, child support. It's crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not even sure if I want a divorce. I know that I will really miss the children. How about revenge? I already told you that your ship has sailed. I appreciate you helping me, but going back to you after you broke my heart wouldn't help. I'm so sorry, Aaron. I had hoped for another chance, but I understand. Although keep in mind that I am ready to take revenge without any conditions. Hell, we might even do it in front of her if you're going to stay with her. Laughing, Aaron said, I'll keep that in mind. This idea is not hopeless. She smiled and asked, What is your plan now? I'll meet her later. Now she is in the hospital. It looks like her father got kicked pretty good and was thrown down some stairs. Lord, what happened? He was the one who tried to create an alibi for my wife so that she would cheat on me. Oh my God, 
Did you send him to the hospital? To her. Is he going to go to the police? I think it's unlikely. I told him I would eventually get bail and do it again. I'm pretty sure he'll be smart enough. Dude, you're cool. Not certainly in that way. I just want him to think twice before he decides to help her cheat again. Do you think she's capable of this? No, I don't trust her, but I don't think she'll do it again. One of her friends, whom she trusted, got angry at her and told me everything she said. She obviously lusted after him because he's so handsome, but he sucks in bed. She didn't get the satisfaction she was looking for and doesn't think she'll take the risk again. Karen told her friend that there was no point in trying to find a better man than me when, as she said, I was a pretty good lover and always made her get to the top more than once. Yes, you have always been a very unselfish lover. Thank you, but that didn't stop her from going astray. Well, to some extent I can understand her. She had a gorgeous boyfriend interested in her, so she took a huge risk to have a piece of the pie, and it turned out that the packaging didn't make the gift any better. I can understand why she wouldn't risk it again. I got burned once. I got embarrassed twice, so to speak. I wish it were that simple. After I kicked her out and ended our conversation that night, I cried for an hour. I just lost my cool and broke down. I have fits of anger and confusion about how she could do this to me, but then I cry again, thinking about losing my children. It's too much for me, he said tearfully. It sucks, and you don't deserve it. You're a great guy, you have a great job, and you deserve a great family life. I'm really sorry that you have to deal with such filth. Look, I need to get back to work, Aaron. Looks like you know what you're going to do. Just keep in mind that I'm ready to be with you. She patted his hand, stood up, and left. Aaron took one last sip of his coffee and realized she was right. He really knew what he was going to do. Do you want some wine or something else? Aaron asked his wife. No, I want to keep a clear head. Fine. I don't need no bullshit excuses. I know everything about why you did it. What I want to know is how can I trust you in the future, and how can you prove that you love me? She fell to her knees and laid her head in his lap, sobbing. You have to believe that I love you. You can trust me, because I know I was wrong and I'm sorry. My father filled my head with all his crap. Yes, I knew from the very beginning why my parents divorced. They didn't want you or anyone else to know, so I kept it a secret. My father always cheated on her. She had no sexual desire since menopause, and she didn't know about his cheating until one day he got angry at her and told her. This was the end for her. I don't care. I know, but that's what planted the seed. He got away with it for years, and I wanted it once. Based on the fact that he wasn't caught until he confessed, I figured I could do it once without any problems. Chris was so good-looking and he wanted me. Enough. I told you I don't care about your excuses. No, I want to explain why you can trust me. Okay, continue, he said with dignity. I did it and it sucked. He was terrible. I realized that I cheated on you in vain. You, of course, did nothing to justify my betrayal. I know it's narcissism. I know it's on me. But I will never risk losing you again. Until the next great coach shows interest. No. Please, I love you. I know it will take time to believe this and for you to trust me, but I will spend every day making it up to you if you let me. My problem, Karen, is that I still love you, but I'm angry. I don't want to lose my kids and be a weekend dad because you can't keep your legs together. Aaron, please give me a second chance. She started crying again, and he pulled her close and let her cry on his chest. He himself began to succumb to emotions, but pulled himself together. I will take you back on one condition. Anything. I get sex in retaliation. Oh, you said anything? Okay, but please let this be the end. We'll be even. I don't want you to hold this over me. We need to start over. Do not rush. You didn't hear the details. You have to watch. You should feel the humiliation and anger I felt. She cried again and hugged him. She whispered, Okay, okay, come back. The children miss you. Karen, can you ask your mom to pick up the kids tomorrow night? Karen was afraid of this. Okay, shall we go somewhere? 
she knew it wasn't so. Almost a month had passed since she returned, and he was still cold towards her. No, tomorrow Carrie will arrive and I will have sex. Who is Carrie? You met her once a few years ago. She left me earlier, right before we met. Oh, Karen said sadly. This was the worst case scenario for her. Now she had to worry about him rekindling an old romance. That woman broke his heart, and Karen put the pieces back together. But it took a long time. Fine. I'll take them to my mother. Okay, I'll let Carrie know so she can be here at eight. Carrie rang the doorbell, and Aaron forced Karen to open it. Karen did not respond to Carrie's bright and cheerful greeting. This will be fun, Carrie told her, closing the door. Aaron walked into the living room and hugged Carrie in greeting. Hi, how are you? Carrie asked. Fine. I'm a little nervous, to be honest. Do not worry. I'm going to take advantage of the gift you're giving me tonight, and I'm going to rock your world. Well then, fine. Would you like something to drink? White wine? Still would. Karen. Yes, please, she said quietly. They were sitting in the living room, sipping drinks, when Karen broke the silence. Please, can we get this over with already? Carrie raised her eyebrows and looked at Aaron. Aaron smiled and said, Fine, let's go upstairs. As Aaron led the women upstairs, Karen began to cry quietly. She had been afraid that this day would come, and the realization that it would finally happen hurt her deeply. Now she fully understood the pain she had caused her husband with her infidelity. Aaron motioned for a chair for Karen to sit down. As soon as she did this, he began to kiss Carrie. Familiar lips returned to him, and he remembered how she liked to kiss deeply. Karen preferred softer, shorter kisses. They undressed, kissing enthusiastically. Karen sobbed as they lay on the bed and kissed. Karen watched with disgust as her husband had hard sex with Carrie. Her eyes were full of tears. She cried when she saw Aaron's face and realized that he was about to reach his peak, a face that should have belonged only to her. Karen decided that her torture was over, but she was wrong. She had to watch their second round. Eventually, he and Carrie reached the finish line again. He noticed Karen get up from her chair but relaxed when he saw her return with a wet rag. Aaron, please tell me it was just one time and it's over. Please tell me that I didn't lose you because of her. Karen cried quietly. He smiled and said, It's over. We're even. I have no desire to continue to abuse you. She hugged him and cried on his chest. Two months later, Carrie was running on the treadmill when she saw Chris approach her. He smiled and said, Hey, pretty girl, can I buy you a cocktail? Carrie stepped off the treadmill and looked Chris straight in the eyes as she kneed him in the crotch as hard as she could. While Chris was lying on the floor writhing in pain, she kicked him twice more and said, This is for fucking married women, asshole. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to avenge Aaron and Karen. Fucking moron. She spat at him as she passed by and smiled at the group of ladies who witnessed her actions. Fucking predator! Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.